Got him. I certainly picked a bad time to send you into town for supplies. What do you mean, Kimitali? While you were gone, I caught a glimpse of that outlaw we've been after, Matt Cagle. Oh, that's plenty good news. You sure it was him? Yes, it was Cagle, all right. I tried to run him down, but I lost his tracks on the rocky ground. And the one thing me not understand, Kimitali. Oh, what's that? Why Matt Cagle come way out here? The only town near here is Buffalo Gap, and it's very small. There's no bank or express office to rob. It's primarily a way station for buffalo hunters. Did you see anything suspicious while you were in town? Uh, nothing suspicious, Kimitsabi. There are not more than ten buildings in the whole town. The biggest one, a hotel. It doesn't make sense. Why should a notorious outlaw like Matt Cagle be hanging around Buffalo Gap? Wait, Kimitsabi, me just remember. A plenty strange party of buffalo hunters arrive in town this morning. What do you mean, strange? Uh, one of them young prince from some country in Europe. Him have a long name, me not remember it. Tato, that's not unusual. Visiting European royalty like to take their chance at buffalo hunting. And you think there's no connection between Matt Cagle and young prince? Well, I don't see how there could be. Even Matt Cagle wouldn't be foolish enough to try robbing a foreign prince. If he did, the whole United States government would be after him. And what we do, Kimi Sabe? Matt Cagle gave us a slip many times now. Tana, we know he's here for some purpose, and there's a chance it isn't good. We'll stay close by and try and pick up his trail again. All right, Your Highness. You defeated me again. You improve every day. How can I help but improve with such an excellent instructor as you, Banner? And how many times must I warn your highness never to turn your back to an enemy? It could mean your death, you know. <laughs> but you're not my enemy. You're my uncle and my friend. Though, if you were my enemy, you would stand to gain much. My death would make you heir to the throne. Your highness, do not talk like that. Your father entrusted me with your welfare and education. I only seek to make sure that when you do ascend the throne, you will be ready for its responsibilities. I was only teasing, Uncle. I know you served me well. Uh, Come in. You wish to see me? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Prince. You are addressing His Royal Highness, Prince Maximilian, and you bow when you speak to him. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, yes, Mr. Baron. I'm not Mr. Baron. I'm His Excellency D. Baron, out of Hungary. Uh, yes, Mr. Bear. I, I mean, Your Excellency. Uncle, you're too harsh on the boy. He does not understand our ways. I do not wonder. These Americans with their illusions of equality and their contempt for titles. <laughs> Uncle, you are the uh, hotel keeper's son, are you not? Well, what is it you wanted, boy? It's a gift. There's a note we all signed. Welcome to Prince Heinrich from the school children of Buffalo Gap. <laughs> Signed Chip Truett, President, Ralph Lawrence Abel, Vice President, Laurie Truett, Secretary and Treasurer. <laughs> well, Uncle, do you still say Americans have contempt for titles? All right. It's a Western hat to win the buffalo hunt. A hat like this for His Highness? Uncle. Thank you, boy. I appreciate the thought. Thank your friends for me. Yes, Your Highness. Uh, little barbarian. He's like all the rest of them. No menace, no culture. I warned you, Father, it would be a mistake for us to come here. But no, His Highness must learn the ways of other countries, he said. It would make him a better ruler someday. Well, perhaps it will, Uncle. After all, we, we have learned much. All right, you better get some rest now. We go on our buffalo hunt at dawn. Are you sure the guide you've hired for the hunt tomorrow is experienced and reliable, Uncle? Of course, the best, Your Highness. I investigated him personally before I sent for him. You should be here sometime tonight. Well, till dawn then, Uncle. All right. But remember, muscles like an accident. I tell you, Baron, you've got nothing to worry about. When the boy is killed, it'll look like the buffaloes trampled him to death. Now, uh, what about a witness? There should be someone else besides you and me who can swear he saw the, uh, the accident. I've got an Apache Indian friend near here. I'll sign him on as pack carrier. He'll swear to anything we tell him to. It's half the money I promise you. I've got the other half when the job is done. I can see I made the wise choice when I selected you for the job. Do you have a question? Yeah, there's one thing bothering me, Baron. What is that? If you want the prince killed, why haven't you done it yourself a long time ago? You must have had plenty of chances. I have indeed. 
You forgot? I'm the boy's uncle. We are very much in the public eye. Any action of mine must be above reproach, since I stand to gain the most by his death. I cannot tell you the number of times I had wished for it. Riding that horse may have been thrown and hurt. We'd better investigate. Whoever rode that horse must be close by. Let's have a look in the barn. Boy, I mean, I'd want to hurt you. I will not. Put that knife down, you'll force me to use this gun. Then use it. If I'm to die, I shall die fighting. I don't know who you think we are. But we mean you no harm. Don't lie to me. You were the two men my uncle hired to assassinate me. But you'll find I don't die easily. Well, what are you waiting for? My weapon is gone now. Why don't you shoot? This boy, hard to convince. We not mean to harm him, King Azami. Save your breath, Redskin. I heard my uncle plotting with your friend last night. As for me, I still have two weapons left, these. And I must warn you, I was taught fisticuffs by the very best tutors in all of Europe. No ruffian can compete with my skill. What me do, Kimisabi? This boy want lesson in fisticuffs, Indian style. I think you'd better give him that lesson, Tarum. I'm afraid he's not going to listen to reason. Try it, Redskin. And when I finish with you, I'll challenge the masked man if he's not afraid. This boy have more courage than skill, Kimizami. I'll show you how much skill I have. Take it easy. I think you've had enough. You've proved your courage. You've learned that we know a bit about fighting over here. I suppose you tell us who you are and what you're doing here in this stable. But, but you must know who I am. My uncle hired you to kill me. I am Prince Heinrich Wilhelm Maximilian. Oh, that plenty big mouthful for name, Kim Sammy. Much too big for us, Tom. Suppose we just call you Hank. I am a prince of the blood royal. No one addresses me as Hank. It is customary to address me as your royal highness. It may be customary in your country, but not in ours. We'll just stick to Hank. Oh, plenty fine jewels in handle of knife, Kim Sammy. Well, Tom, it's not a knife. It's called a stiletto. This belongs to you. You're giving it back to me? Why not? We mean you no harm. And this is the best way to prove it. I will never understand your American customs. <laughs> First you fight me like an enemy, then you trust me as a friend. One of our customs is to shake hands after a fight, no hard feelings. Mm, that's right, boy. Me like to be your friend. <laughs> Perhaps I was taught fisticuffs by the wrong tutors. I should have come to America long ago. Hank, suppose you tell us about your uncle and these hired assassins. Well, it's, it's rather a long story. Perhaps we'd best sit down. Good. Now, I want the truth. Did you see the prince leave last night? No, sir. I mean, no, Your Excellency. But you know where he's gone. No, sir. I only know there's a horse missing from the stable this morning. And a saddle. All right. Get out. Take him. Did you hear the boy? Yeah. I wonder what made the prince run away. I don't know. He must have heard us talking last night. There can be no other answer. We well, sure did a stupid thing, taking a horse and riding off into the wilderness. He won't last two days. Suppose he meets someone and starts talking. Oh, no. We must track him down. I want you to follow him and find him, wherever he is. And when I do? There is no time for a buffalo hunt now. When you find the prince, he will already be dead. Is it clear? Sure, Baron. Plenty clear. I'll find the kid dead. And 
that, my friends, is the end of my story. Who would have thought my uncle would be so ambitious to one day sit on my throne? But why you not go to Buffalo Gap and tell Sheriff what happened? Because my uncle would have only denied it, said I was having nightmares or something. Oh, Hank's right, Tonto. If he'd have stayed anywhere near the Baron, his life would have been in greater danger than it is now. If I could contact my country's embassy in Washington, they should have to help me. Not that not possible. There are no telegraph office within 100 miles of here. When your uncle finds you missing, he won't waste any time in sending Matt Cagle to look for you. Do you think Matt Cagle manned him higher, Kimisami? I'm sure of it, Tonto. He couldn't be in this territory for any other reason. It'd be plenty good if we could find him and capture Baron at the same time. Exactly what we must do. If we don't, Hank's life will be in constant danger. But uh, I could not allow you to take such risk for me. After all, I'm a foreign prince, and you are citizens of the United States. You owe me no allegiance. You still have a lot to learn about Americans, Hank. Isn't that right, boy. When someone in trouble, we not ask where they're from. We try to help. Kimisami, we go to Buffalo Gap and find Baron and Kegel? First, we have to show the Baron up for what he is, a would-be assassin. How we do that? The Baron wants a chance to kill the Prince. We're going to give him that chance. But, uh, did you look everywhere? I looked everywhere within 20 miles of here. I lost his trail at the river. What is it? There's an Indian to see Your Excellency. I have no time for Indians. He says it's about the Prince. Oh, all right. Let him come in. What do you want, Redskin? You man they call Baron? Yes, I am. You uncle of young prince from European country? What about the prince? Me find him last night in stable. Him fall off horse, hurts leg, can't travel far. Uh, what did he tell you? Him give me plenty money to ride the nearest telegraph office with message. All right, but uh, what did he tell you? Uh, him tell me not to let you know me find him. Then why are you letting me know? I may think a boy pay me so much money not to let you know, you pay even more of me to tell you. But, uh, how will I know that you are telling the truth? Mm, he take this handkerchief from him. This is his. Where is it? You pay me enough money, me lead you to him. How much you want? Uh, boy give me a hundred dollars, and maybe you give me two hundred. All right, Indian, two hundred. But I must get the money in my bedroom. You'll wait here. You heard everything? Yeah, every word. That redskin is sure making it easy for us. Almost too easy. I don't like the looks of it. Aren't you going with him? Of course, I have no choice. If he has the prince hidden somewhere, I must find him. But as soon as we leave here, I want you to follow us. To keep out of sight until we reach our destination. Then move in and finish off the prince. Huh? And the Indian, too. He learned far too much for his own good. Just a little something I carry in case of uh, emergency. <laughs> Remember, keep close behind us. All right, Indian. Let me go now. You told him. Him pay me more money than you. I'm disappointed in you, Your Highness. Running away from your loving uncle. You know my only concern is your welfare. I know all about your concern for me, uncle. I heard you talking with that outlaw last night. Oh, how unfortunate it is, Your Highness. It has necessitated my killing you even sooner than I had planned. You may not understand this talk about killing. Give me what you promised, then may go. On the contrary, Indian. You stay. What do you mean? You did not think I was fool enough to follow you here without assuring myself I was protected? This is some kind of trick. Drop that gun, Indian. You see? I could not be sure whether you were telling the truth or not, so I took this necessary precaution. Well, what happened now? He thinks he's going to kill both of us, Redskin. But he couldn't be more wrong. I thought you said he had an injured leg. A slight prevarication, Uncle. To get you out here and prove just what your intentions were in front of a witness. And uh, what good will that do you after I kill your witness? I was not referring to the Indian, Uncle. Like you, I took the necessary precaution of protecting myself. There's a man with a gun standing behind you and that outlaw right now. Don't believe him, Baron. That's the oldest trick in the world. You still think it's a trick, Hegel? You're the masked man who was chasing me yesterday. 
Tano and I have been after you for a long time. Well, Uncle, what do you have to say now? Well, <laughs> I can only say that uh, I underestimated Your Highness. You have outwitted me. But <laughs> I'm an old hand in palace politics. I learned that the loss of a battle does not necessarily mean the loss of a war. It means the loss of this war, Baron, and you won't get a chance to fight another one. Tano, get some rope. Oh, you Americans are always so sure of yourself. But it's the quality I admire. Very well, my friend. I admit defeat. I can only duff my hat and salute my conqueror. Drop it in, him. Come down here. You too, drop your other gun. As I warned you, Your Highness, the loss of a battle doesn't mean the loss of a war. I gotta hand it to you, Baron. That was mighty fast thinking. In my profession, one must think fast in order to survive. Keep your gun on them all the time. It's rather a shame, my prince. I think you would have made a good ruler if you had lived to rule. But of course, it's not the good who win thrones. It is the strong. I wouldn't count on it, Baron. You're not on the throne yet. Oh, you Americans. Such optimism, even when the cause is lost. Oh, what? Uh, don't think about it badly, my friend. After all, your country is new, raw, uncivilized. You could not hope to compete with old line European diplomacy and ingenuity. My people have been in this country a long time, too, Baron. Longer than your people have been in your country. We maybe know some tricks, too. You'd be surprised just how ingenious an American can be when he has to. Then you better display your ingenuity quickly, my friend, because you have just about 30 seconds on this earth. You killed the prince first, then the masked man, then the Indian. Well, that'll be a pleasure. Wait, Baron. What for? We have played our little game today, and haven't we? Not quite the end. If you kill the prince, you may not recover the jewels he took when he ran away. Oh. You fled with more than just the claws on your back, did you? Yes, I want the jewels before he died. I, I have no jewels. The jewels, please. Or must I kill you first and search you afterward? You better give them up, Prince. After all, you were willing to this morning. You practically pushed them at Tano as if they were a weapon. So I did. I'd almost forgotten. The uh, jewels are in my boot, uh, Uncle. Have I your permission to get them? You have my order to get them up. Frick, you shot me, Uncle! Here he goes! Well, Hank, this time the war is really over. Yes, thanks to American ingenuity. safely in jail. But your uncle will have to stay there until your government decides what to do with him. Why are you dressed in Western clothes? Well, I thought if I was truly to learn about your wonderful country, then I should try to become one of you. You'll make a good ruler someday. Well, it's time that Tonto and I were riding out. I, I shall miss you both. I shall never be able to thank you enough for the wonderful lesson you've taught me. What do you mean? Well, that it's not who a man is, but what he is that counts. Well, that's a lesson we all have to learn sooner or later, Hank. Or should I say, Prince? Adios. So long. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come in. Your Royal Highness? Your Royal Highness? Yes? If Your Royal Highness is ready, supper is waiting. What did you say your name was, boy? Chip, Your Royal Highness. Chip Truett. Well, do me a favor, Chip. As long as I'm in America, call me Hank. Hank? Well, it's a name I think I've rather earned. I'm certainly proud of it. Almost as proud as that masked man must be of his name. The Lone Ranger. I am Silver! 